Last week at a Diwali Milan function, our Prime Minister stated that I recently saw a video in which I was seen singing a Garba song. There are many other such videos online and that the looming threat of deepfakes has become a great concern and can create a lot of problems for everyone. The only problem in all of this was that this was actually not a deepfake video. It's a lookalike called Vikas Mahante who plays dress up like Prime Minister Modi and goes to public events because our Prime Minister is too busy, possibly with other public events. While the Prime Minister's own reference was factually incorrect, the issue of deepfakes has caught the public imagination after a viral video depicting actor Rashmika Mandana, which is a deep fake, went viral. The video showed her in revealing attire, which set off a social alarm and panic as to the state of a regulatory and a policy vacuum in India. So it becomes important for us to understand what are deep fake technologies, what are the risks posed by it, and what are the policy responses being considered today by the Indian government. So welcome to Amalta Talks and today's video will deal with the policy and the governance around deep fake videos. It first becomes important for us to understand what is a deep fake video. The term deep fakes is derived from the technology involved in the creation of this particular style of manipulated content, which involves the use of deep learning technologies. Deep learning itself is a subset of machine learning techniques, which are a subset of artificial intelligence. And recent advances in computing power, graphics, vision, and machine learning have made it easier to automatically synthesize compelling fake audio, as I will play a little later on at the end of the video, images and video. In the audio domain, in fact, it's become highly realistic to synthesize the sounds of one artist on another track. But today's focus is on deepfake videos and these can be broken down into three types. The first is a simple face swap where you take somebody's face like in the instance of actor Rashmika Mandana and place it on another person's body. The second is a lip sync where the source video is modified to make the mouth up region appear consistent with arbitrary audio recording. For instance, taking somebody's face and making them say something else. And the third is the puppet master, where a target person is animated, head movements, eye movements, facial expressions by a performer sitting in front of a camera and acting out what they want their puppet to say or do. In effect, it's essentially a completely synthesized recreation of an entire video. Now, why we all should be a little much more concerned and paying attention to this, not only from the point of social alarm or the impact with respect to how more obscene content may be created is that deepfake renders a partial or a complete fiction. This is a lie and it is very persuasive. It can take the shape even of your own face and body, crisp, lifelike and plausible. It can fool not only the world, but even if you watch those videos enough times and it shows you, it can even gaslight you and make you believe some things which never happened. With each passing day, this technology behind it is getting easier, cheaper and more accessible. Now, this has the potential of weakening social trust. As we are quite fond of saying, a picture says a million words. But the problem is when we pay more attention, it leads to quite often us being persuaded to see from the point of view of what we have just consumed in terms of synthetic content. And this is a very human, a cognitive bias, which essentially makes us trust each other. And when deepfakes proliferate, it can actually weaken social trust by making us distrust things which we see. It can manifest itself in beneficial uses as well. For instance, recreating a historical event, such as the Dandi March in 4K, but it also has harmful uses, which are being talked about more and more because they're becoming more and more common. For instance, India is a highly patriarchal society. It will be primarily used on female celebrities, influencers, or even by former spouses as a form of retribution, entertainment, objectification of the female body. It can also lead to misinformation around elections and public officials. Now pause for a second and look at your favorite social media application, be it Instagram, Facebook, or even LinkedIn, and ask yourself how many pictures of you exist there. Even better, just Google yourself. Does all of this information provide enough material to a disgruntled neighbor, a work colleague or a former partner to pull a string on a puppet and then share it with your friends and family as a way of synthetic content showing what you did not do? 
there are set of individual harms which many people immediately fear and with good reason. However, we also need to consider the wider public damage this can cause. Beyond public personalities which may be entertainers, the use of deepfakes of a person will often depend on who they are. Given how Indian society is deeply unequal, the patriarchal values, the caste system and majoritarianism, the use of deepfakes will without question impact individuals from marginalized groups more severely. Now that we understand to some extent what are deepfake videos and what is the harm they can cause, let's look at the existing laws in India and whether they provide you some form of remedy and what can be the possible consequences for people who make these kind of deepfake videos. The problem with the civil and criminal laws in India is that they are very very limited. Now for instance, if you take section 66C of the Information Technology Act which says the punishment for identity theft is Whoever fraudulently or dishonestly makes use of the electronic signature, password or any other unique identification feature which can be a person's face, they shall be liable for punishment with the imprisonment of a term which may extend to 3 years. Now you'll ask me and you'll say, Abar, well there is a law for that. People can be punished under it. Then what's the problem? I'm not going to the problem that the police will refuse to register an FIR or that prosecution won't be affected. Let's just look at this law itself. Now, what are the phrases which are used here? It's fraudulently and dishonestly. Fraudulently is defined under section 24 of the Indian Penal Code as whoever does anything with the intention of causing wrongful gain to one person or wrongful loss to another person. Section 25 of the IPC defines fraudulently as a thing which is done with the intent to defraud but not otherwise. And wrongful loss and wrongful gain is also defined with respect to unlawful means of property to which a person losing it is legally entitled. What this means is that it should be tied to a monetary loss, which means that the section is indeed limited if it comes to a substantive application of this provision. The other branch of Indian law which deals with impersonation is with respect to censorship and takedowns. So for instance, if a viral video is shown on social media websites, then there can be a direction which can be issued by a court to take it down or you can also approach it under the IT rules 2021. Now the problem with a lot of this is that it's casting the entire burden on the victim to go to a police thana and register the complaint, to write to a social media company to its grievance officer for the takedown of content and this is a systemic problem. It is liable to spread as AI technologies proliferate, they become cheaper, easier to access for people across India. Now the inadequacy of these provisions and enforcement capacity comes across more clearly when we consider the public harms which are caused by deepfakes beyond an individual level, beyond what will it impact in terms of you or me. Here the parties may be politicians or public officials which can be easily targeted. Worse, doubt can be sowed against acts of investigative journalism that reveal abuse of power or corruption which are captured on audio and video by saying that this is synthetic content, it's a deep fake. All of this will lead to a wide variety of harms from manipulation of elections, widening social divisions, lowering the trust we have towards our government institutions. And there is a foreseeable risk that with sufficient funding and mobilization, an entire universe of synthetic content can be created by multiple adversarial forces to construct a series of deep fakes conjuring up an alternative reality. So for instance, just step back. How much time do you spend on social media? Now imagine that your feed is coming with viral synthetic content from different accounts which may be audio, video, pictures of one public official. You are very likely to believe it. Given that many people these days do not even read the newspaper. We get our news primarily through social media feeds. And when we are told that all of these are viral deep fakes, social trust amongst people, among society will collapse. Many of these harms have been documented in two broader policy papers which I really found to be useful. The first is by the Brookings Institution and the second is by the Countering Extremism Project and both of them are linked in the description below. Given the dangers which are posed by deep fake technologies, what is our government doing about it? And I'm disappointed to say it's not doing much. Here, it's engaged in empty rhetoric. For instance, if you look at the parliamentary replies of the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, over a period of time, at least to five members of parliament in different questions, it's provided answers saying that 
existing laws are sufficient. And as I just went through, they are not. And this was very clear in the ministerial response to the viral video of Rashmika Mandana, where the minister stated that victims can file criminal complaints and also issued an advisory to social media companies for expedited takedowns. Basically, a response which is saying that let's undertake censorship rather than looking at a wider view. It's not like the ministry has not looked at this issue at all. So, for instance, in February 2018, it constituted an AI committee with four different working groups, which came out of four different reports. And here, Committee D looked at the ethical and the social impacts by AI as well as synthetic content such as deepfakes. And it said that laws and regulations can be an important backstop in ensuring fundamental lines are not lost. But these lines are being crossed because laws and regulations are not being made. A much more recent document, in fact, is the India AI 2023, which is again a ministry initiative, which was released in October 2023. Now, this strategy document is essential towards the promotion of AI-based technologies in government as well as in the corporate sector. Now, this is all well and good, but it can't be without protection, safeguards to ordinary people like you and me or to the social impacts it will cause. And this kind of lack of balance and consideration is found reflection in the Digital Data Protection Act, which is the privacy law that took nine years to make and is still not into effect. But if you look at Clause 3C sub Clause 2, it actually exempts any data which is made public by a data principal like you and me. So basically anything, any picture, any video that you've put on social media that can be used as training data by a large AI-based company. And that training data by itself is the very basis how deepfake videos are made. This even conflicts with the Puttaswamy judgment where the Supreme Court reaffirmed the fundamental right to privacy and the opinion by Justice Sanjay Kishan Kaul stated that even content which is published by people on social media still has privacy because it's having an expectation of autonomy where a person continues to de decide who gets to use it under what conditions. But this is not consistent under the Data Protection Act and these protections do not exist in it. Even at a party level, the BJP is using deepfake technology without adequate disclosures to the people it's targeting with the synthetic content made by it. And this becomes very clear from a Vice report, which is dated February 7, 2020, where the BJP partnered with a communications firm called the Ideas Factory to create deep fakes that let it target voters across 20 different languages used in India. This deep fake made for the BJP had Manoj Tiwari, who's a Delhi based politician, and reached approximately 15 million people in 5,800 WhatsApp groups. And this was as per a proud statement by the BJP. With this, we come to the third and the final part of this video, which is that what are other countries doing about it? And this also becomes important for us to consider what are the laws which can be made, what are the policies which can be made. And here, Europe has already initiated a process some years back, which is around the AI Act, which is the Artificial Intelligence Act, which is still a proposal, but it is essentially proceeding on the principle of classifying and regulating different artificial intelligence applications based on their risks and the harm they can cause. For those who are interested in this more, I've linked to a paper from the European Parliament on deep fakes and European policy and regulation. In addition to the AI Act, the General Data Protection Regulation, which is their data protection law, might also apply to deep fakes. And this is because the information conveyed through a deep fake is incorrect, does not bear on the GDPR's applicability as long as the person can be recognized through a deep fake because they are identifiable as personal data. Moreover, the data used to render the deep fake is in most cases also applicable within the GDPR because it's taken from the social media profiles. I've linked to another paper which looks at the GDPR and deep fakes in the comment section below. Now, let's also look at what the United States is doing about that. And it's recently passed the landmark executive order on safe, secure and trustworthy development and use of artificial intelligence. And the fact sheet states that it aims to protect Americans from AI-enabled fraud and deception by establishing standards and best practices for detecting AI-generated content and authenticating official content. The Department of Commerce, it states, will develop guidance for content authentication and watermarking to clearly label AI-generated content. None of this, unfortunately, is happening in India. As I end this video, 
I will also like to refer to two really good op-eds which I've read around this. The first is by Mohit Chaudhary and the second one is by Anupriya Dhonchak. They are contained as links in the description below. But let me not only leave you with prescribed reading. Our delightfully troubled relationship with digital technologies in the age of AI is wonderfully captured by a song which I was listening to and looping again and again right before I made this video. It is a Freddie Mercury cover of Rolling in the Deep. If you enjoyed this video and the learning that it provided you, please do consider subscribing to this channel or recommending it to a friend. So, thank you so much for watching Amal Das Talks. Till we meet again, thank you.